Hi, I'm Wynne, and welcome to another educational video by The Entropy System. With something as big and life-altering as DID, I often ask myself and get asked by other people online how I didn't know I had it for so long. If Jonathan's timeline is correct, then I've been multiple since I was four months old, so... How did no one notice? I've done a lot of looking back on my life to try and pinpoint things that would be odd, and the more I look, the more I can find. And at the time, the thing was, I just thought these experiences were normal. Even if Jonathan did come in a little later than we've sort of guessed, Josh was born when I was three years old, so still my entire remembered life has been with alters. That means that I didn't ever have anything else to compare my experiences to. There was no way for me to know that what I was going through wasn't what what every other human being was going through. That in the English language really lends itself to normalizing DID experiences. I'm really just not feeling myself today. It was like I was a completely different person. It's like there's someone in my head telling me to go. It's like there's a war going on in my brain. If you grow up only knowing what it's like to be a multiple, it can be really easy to take those phrases and say, oh, I go through that, okay. <laughs> Other specific occurrences that I've sort of been able to bring up is um, suddenly loving food that I've hated. Um, and I don't mean like, you know, sometimes you'll be like, oh, I think I'm in the mood for something salty today. Normally I like sweet, but like I hate KFC. I think it is the nastiest chicken anybody ever decided to call food. But some days I just craved it and I couldn't concentrate until I sat down and ate a KFC meal. Normally this food would make me feel sick, but every now and again, I loved KFC. I would also have friends that I could only kind of remember. There's one friend, I wanna say her name is Abby. I feel like it's not correct, but when I was in elementary school, she was blonde and I even went over to her house twice, but I regularly forgot her name. And when I did go over to her house and went home, I couldn't really remember anything that we had done. And it made me really nervous, but I thought that maybe, her home life was just so radically different than mine that my brain just couldn't process it. And that's why it was a really weird experience for me. When I was like middle school age and high school, um, I would hear someone singing in my head. Like it wasn't like a hallucination, like it was never on the outside, but um, it was like there was a song stuck in my head, but it was really, really loud. I was just like, oh, the song is especially loud that stuck in my head today and I would try to really concentrate and just like listen to it and try to keep it staying loud because I really liked it. Um, and then eventually it would fade away and it would just be me thinking the words. And I was like, oh man, I lost the groove. I can't get the loud version of having a song stuck in my head back. And I know now that Jonathan does that for me. He sings me music. Whenever I would play pretend as a kid, I would always play a guy, which I know that isn't like super abnormal, at least I don't think it is, um, but I know that that was Daniel. Daniel would come forth and make me feel very, very masculine when we were playing. And then when I, you know, later in college, when he, uh, you know, fully turned into, you know, all the way Daniel and not just this, um, you know, two-dimensional masculine feeling, uh, I started to cross-dress as a guy named Daniel and I, you know, would bind and stuff and, and I just thought that was a phase that I had gone through. Sometimes I was Wynn and sometimes I was Daniel. My bisexuality seemed to change sometimes too. Um, there were days where I liked both guys and girls, and then there were days where I was just thought guys were the most disgusting things that ever walked the planet, and I could never fathom ever being in a relationship with a man. I always sort of was uh, a little bit reserved unless I was around large groups of people, and suddenly I was like, oh, hey, honey, what's up, handsome? You know, this and like being like a little flirty, and I that was Kit. That was Kit being the social person um, and the, 
sort of magnetic personality that she felt that I needed to be in these groups where I was on my own. Perhaps the funniest thing um, and the thing that was hardest for me to give up as a real experience was I was for certain that there was a little girl ghost living in my room because I would like feel her presence sometimes and I knew exactly what she looked like and I was like yeah she'll turn music on for me I'll be sitting at my desk and then suddenly the radio will be on and like I was convinced and then my brother also had like sort of a paranormal experience maybe in that same area of the house so I was like oh my god that cements it he had this an experience too there's definitely a ghost a ghost wasn't turning on the radio for me I was just losing time and me turned on the radio that one I didn't want to accept for a really long time but it makes more sense one of the weirdest things the thing that was hardest to explain away was at work one day and another co-worker came up and was like you know when you get angry you speak with a British accent? I don't know if like I had a British altar at one point or if that was just their way of trying to describe mistletoes very like pointed and like high way of speaking. At the time I was like well my mom watches BBC a lot and I really like Doctor Who so maybe the accent just worked its way into my subconscious because that's how talking works. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Finally there was the whole um, like at school uh, people would come up to me in the hallway and be like, hey, Wynn, how's it, how's your day? How's it going? I'd be like, ah, thanks, stranger. You're really friendly. I don't know. We were a small school and I would get leads in some of the school plays and I was just like, oh my God, being in the drama department made me so popular. People just come up in the hallway and want to be my friend. So anyway, how did I not know? You don't know what you don't know. And if you're not expecting to see something, you probably won't see it. So in the words of Pocahontas, when I found out about my DID, I learned something that I never knew I never knew. <laughs> anyway, thanks guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit us up on social media. Um, and our fans made a Discord for us. So if you want to talk to other people who like us, uh, then the link for that is also in the description below. Uh, I hope everybody has a really, really great day, and I'll see you all later. Bye!